Ladies and gentlemen, what you're about to see was maybe 90 to 100% released in the last 48 hours. I've called it a Cambrian explosion. You tell me. Artist Journal, January 12th, 2023, Berlin. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. I welcome you back and I welcome all the new subscribers here. I think it's been going around on Twitter or I don't know what's going on, but we're seeing a bit of a, I don't, you know, to call it a spike with our humble numbers is perhaps an exaggeration, but we're seeing a bit of an anomaly in the growth. So that is super interesting, super exciting. I mean, maybe it's just a testament to this space and what is going on as you're going to see here, as we see right here with Uxine's work. And, you know, so this, as a lot of you have been following, I mean, J JRD, Joe Rogan's dad, who co-hosted the Twitter spaces with me yesterday, and he did an awesome job. Thank you, JRD, the cousin of Runetune. And he was out of Kansas City, so we had a very international situation there. And uh, yeah, he was calling what was going on with Uxine a hero moment. And I really like that. And what's so cool about it is it's happening multi-chain too. And I've always advocated being multi-chain as an artist. It empowers the artists more than anything. And it's also kind of different collectors, different, you know, we've talked about this many a time, uh, different audiences, different, you know, feelings to the, these platforms, which might bring about different kinds of work. You could argue that could be happening right here with this very ambitious work by Uxine, which looks fabulous, went for 10 ETH. And you see the, you know, if you're looking on a phone, you might not be able to see it, but this great kind of glitched out invalid. You know, something I just noticed this morning, I've looked at this piece a few times, <clears throat> like many of you, uh, this kind of uh, halo here, it comes from behind and then it looks like it's going over top and you barely see it just come. So it almost looks like this is something coming from behind and showing up over top. And again, this kind of beautiful, you know, gift, gift out skull and in the hands of the, you know, friar and the, the bodiless friar here. And of course, the final glitch is here with this kind of digital noise almost this ASCII lettering that's been cut off, you know, just more, you know, I, like I use the word masterpiece a little too often for my taste. I get, but you're going to see here a series of very impressive works. And this, you know, went for 10 ETH. Uh, let's just look at the details here. And a great, great, great title. Overproduced Variants of Hell uh, by Uxine went for... 10.01 ETH, $13,200, ladies and gentlemen, for this digital work of art. The owner is Xenophon, who also has a Uxine uh, in his profile picture. That looks like it's from Tezos. And, you know, this speaks to what we're seeing here. And so, anyways, beautiful work here. Uh, and what we're seeing on Tezos, and before we look at Uxine's, what's happening on Tezos, NSF World put together a celebration of the creator. Like, you know, Uxine kind of has the space going. And again, it's a multi-chain thing. This is on Ethereum and Tezos, you know, uh, two, you could argue the two most prominent artist blockchains. There are others, Solana and more, um, but it's quite something. It's kind of, a, as JRD beautifully put, it is a hero moment and what a moment to do it. I mean, look at all these tabs, you guys. So there's a lot to go, get through, so I'll speed up here. But NSF World, uh, minted with permission. That's cool he, he says that because it is using a uh, Uxine work, although I think Uxine is CC0, I think. Double check. Uh, we can double check. But anyways, a really cool tribute here from NSF World, who is a very wonderful follow on Twitter here with the Uxine kind of profile picture really nicely done. Uh, so looking at Uxine, now this is on Tezos, on object.com. If you look at the sales here, and I feel like I need to refresh this just in case. Yeah, like you see, there's kind of a constant stream here of sales. But wait till you see, I mean, a lot of you are already going to know this, but a lot of you might not. Uh, Uxine made a sale on Tezos for 10000 
Tezos the other day, just like yesterday or the day before. Maybe it was Tuesday. Here's another one for 6900 So, and I think it was repriced to like 20000 Yeah, now it's 19999 uh, So anyways, I mean, a lot of you guys already know the story. This sold for 750 This is beautiful. I love that work. Uh, edition of 22 selling for 750 And this is something else we were commenting on yesterday. This, see this, edition of 321 selling for 69 Tezos. So this market is on fire here and deservedly so. This edition of 11 for 1500 Tezos. Here's the one of one that went for 10,000 over here. It's quite a brilliant work. I mean, uh, I had to take, like, it's one of those things, like there's so much that we take in here on a daily basis. Uh, sometimes you don't get the work. Like here you have the bodies going into the, and with this great title roadmap, going into the computer and coming out skeletons. Uh, pretty cool. So anyways, uh, the excitement continues. The hero moment, uh, as JRD said, uh, continues. And a big shout out to Martin Joe yesterday uh, for appearing on the program and for putting together a little uh, movie poster of sorts uh, for uh, the Twitter spaces. Well, actually, maybe not for the Twitter spaces, but it sure worked out that way. What's going on here? Adrian Pocabelli, Joe Rogan's dad. So there I am. There we are with the kinky bears at last. As I said on the Twitter spaces, my work is done here. I am finally, I have finally met the kinky bears in person here. So pretty hilarious. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. Great work, Martin Joe, as always. And Martin Joe, I mean, this is what's so fascinating about this Twitter spaces. I mean, people are pretty, you know, uh, generous sharing their information. He works in Midjourney almost exclusively, from what I understood. Uh, so isn't that interesting? And we're, uh, Sky Goodman was in there and he was talking about his process, how he loves to use several different softwares, uh, which we had a big discussion about on exporting and all that stuff. So that was fabulous. Now, this number, 387, I don't think there were 387 people in the Twitter spaces, but I think what might have happened, I think Twitter... Because when you click on the spaces button on your phone, you get some kind of, if you want to listen to pre-recorded Twitter spaces, you can. I think they might have shared it in that kind of area for people that are interested in, you know, art and AI art or whatever. So, because 387, that's a good number. That is, so I think it must have been shared a little bit by Twitter. So anyways, thanks to everybody that came out. And uh, thanks to Joe Rogan's dad for co-hosting. It was a really awesome Santiago. Everybody who showed up there. Uh, Chi Mosku Jackson talking about his show in Seattle. Uh, everything. So that was awesome. And this was kind of hilarious too. Uh, Jurastics. Uh, paint Prep and Artist Journal Live. So you got to love it. And Rare, Rare Force One was saying something similar uh, so anyways, well, that he listens to it while he works. So that is just super cool. This is like, I love it, you know, like artists, you know, there's nothing you want more as an artist myself than for other artists to kind of be into what you're talking about and what we're saying here. Uh, so to what everybody is, is saying out here, a quick shout out to Agor. Thank you for picking this up. Security of Europe, a work from the secret history of World War III. Uh, for 20 Tezos, that's awesome. And yeah, these are kind of preliminary works of something I am working on. Many of the too many projects here. And thank you to, I sold a fair amount of these 8-bit nature works. So the last cloud went, there's one more fire left and desert. Desert is popular with the prints. Uh, and anyways, snow and flowers sold. So anyways, that's super duper cool. Thank you, everybody. And I just thought this was kind of funny. Uh, we were looking at this and Tegenhoff was saying how he discovered the show. It's on my watch list even more when I mentioned. And I just thought it's kind of funny. I, I have a sunset in the 8-Bit Nature series and I was like, oh, it almost kind of looks like this. 
So it was just kind of a funny similarity. So I thought, isn't that cool? So anyway, shout out to Tegan Hoff. A uh, quick uh, comment from Martin Baldwin, uh, who was wondering about the what did the big throwdown mean? And he appreciates the explanation. And this was an interesting comment because uh, I think Martin might be, I don't know if he's newer to the scene, but so it's always interesting to hear these perceptions of people. He's definitely new to the channel. While referring to NFTs as maybe a flash in the pan, I personally think that NFTs could be with us for a long haul. It seems too many people enjoy creating and collecting them. The community is growing and developing. And I particular, I agree with all of this and particularly this people, I'm having too much fun over here just on the creation front. And as you're going to see, I mean, it's so intellectually stimulating what's going on here, particularly if you're a lover of the visual arts. So I agree. Like, I mean, maybe they'll need to change the name. Like, I'm not worried about the name NFTs. A lot of people like seem to be like, oh, we need to change the name. I mean, I don't see any problems here. You know, just because, you know, some big corporations are saying NFTs suck doesn't mean that they're right. <laughs> right. And I'm going to show you. Here's, you decide for yourself, dear viewer. We're going to run through this here. Um, so Santiago just posts a work in progress and shout out for showing up. I like to show the works in progress uh, here. So anyways, and he was talking about his process and using GIMP and putting all these different previous paintings that he wouldn't want to release into a new painting. So just interesting because we've been looking at his work the last few days. And also an auction while we're on Santiago here. He has an auction going on right now for a one of one, which is at 50. And so again, this experimentation here, uh, write in my hand and face a horrible poem with permanent markers while errors pop up on my screen. Art made on Inkscape with shapes taken from a screenshot of my desktop background, which consists in a collage of AI images. Okay, so again, a lot of kind of recycling over here. So 50 Tezos, one of one. Another just comment, I mean, Charles AI is always very kind of intellectually provocative in a good way. And he had an interesting comment, which I'm still kind of working out, but I thought I'd share it with you because I thought it was just kind of an interesting idea as far as I can understand it. One of ones drive edition prices. More editions, less one of ones is a good way to release more art while conserving the value of your work, in my opinion. So <clears throat> I think the idea is if you have less one of ones, there will be more scarcity, which will drive more value to your work. And so therefore, maybe you have more additions is a good way to release more art. So if you're, let's say you want to keep the scarcity, then you release additions and you're still able to retain the value of the one of ones by not putting too many out there and while having the collectors battle for those few that you have. Interesting thought, very interesting thought. And speaking of collectors and additions, Haiti Rocket, who was also at the Twitter spaces uh, yesterday, shout out to him. Uh, he sold, he made a great sale here, 800 Tezos. For this work here, let's see if we can play it. So for one of these works, uh, part of a series he's worked on here, uh, just kind of crazy internet, you know, imagery, kind of all, you know, glitched out, shall we say. Uh, this is more on a collage front, maybe. Um, but often there will be like, you know, screenshots and Windows 95 type imagery and whatnot. This is maybe more on a collage front. But anyways, 800 Tezos, an addition of seven. Nice sale. And this kind of speaks like things seem to be heating up here, especially on Tezos. And there's this whole kind of notion, you know, I, what I'm calling the X copy effect that, you know, when X copy, you know, gave a shout out to Uxine, uh, you know, on Twitter, or bought some of his work, uh, that got a lot of Ethereum collectors attention. And now we're starting to see as, you know, uh, the supply is starting to dry up on a lot of these artists that we've been looking at here. Gloom Tube is another. So here Haiti makes a sale. So you see the circumstantial evidence is starting to grow here. 
my friends. Just more evidence. And look, just, you know, another kind of sign of a good, healthy market, as I like to call it, One Don't Knows releases a new work, and he does a lot of collage, generally of, you know, let's say Renaissance to 18th century paintings and makes them his own. He's become quite, you know, known for it and remarkable at it. And he has a three ETH bid, opening bid on Guardian of Death on Super Rare. So pretty impressive over here. So shout out and congrats to One Don't Knows. That is a pretty nice opening bid. And Bazaya, I miss this work. And speaking of screenshots here, right? Uh, here we have Windows 95, I think, or maybe this is Windows 2000 or whatever, Windows XP, right? Uh, and you have uh, uh, Snoop and you have uh, other figures here. And I think maybe that's Bazaya. I always get these wrong. But anyways, a cool work on Super Rare with MetaMask and Super Rare there. Pretty hilarious. And Twitter and a burning address for the recycling bin. Anyways, Essentials, cool title as usual from Bazaya. Sorry, let me bring that back here. And this went for 0.4 ETH to Igordo. Shout out to Igordo, who I met on Twitter just yesterday, yesterday morning. So anyways, Igordo picks up a uh, new Bazaya from uh, on Super Rare. And I don't know if I, I think we might have shown the last Bazaya, but we'll see if this loads up. But Vincent Van Doe picked up the second work and that was just a transfer, so we don't know how much that went for. Uh, but it's part of the Super Bazaar world. This work here, this went to Vincent Van Do. I believe it was just a transfer. Yeah, so we don't know what it went for, but anyways, congrats. This is super cool. So Bazaar is selling everything on Super Rare. Uh, shout out to Rare. Uh, and he just did this commission here when he finished The Lamb of Boston Dynamics, which was a big hit and which we had on the program a few days ago, which feels like a month ago, but it was probably like Monday or Tuesday. Uh, so anyways, so here's a new commission from Rare. And he also goes again into his, uh, his process. And what's interesting about it, I mean, he's looking at all sorts, like to me, it's a testament to the, uh, to the, for lack of a better term, the intellectual fortitude of this scene. You know, uh, look like when you look at, you know, comments like this, previous paintings, a lot of my work was more of a pastiche to 17th to 19th century paintings, putting spot in situations he couldn't be in. While painting for myself, I can actually show what my true paint style is, though always evolving through personal taste and text. So he goes into it and he talks about, you know, famous painters and how he's, you know, you know, Uwen Uglo, who influenced him. And so to me, this is just like, there's a couple of things. First, it shows the depth of the art that's happening here. As I always say, to be a part of the tradition, to a certain degree, you need to have a conversation with the tradition. Uh, but it also shows a really interesting way of communicating with the artist, with the public. Because this isn't an interview. He didn't wait for someone to interview him. Uh, it's him just explaining his style. And you can't really do this in this way on Instagram, can you? Right? And where else are you going to do it? On a blog post? It's, it doesn't seem to... I guess you could, but who's going to find it? And they have to click on the link. Twitter, you know, continues to be a very good tool for artists to state the obvious. So particularly digital artists, because they can have their digital works up on Twitter. You know, you don't even need, like, that is the work. It's not a photo of your painting that you're talking about, right? And I thought this was actually really interesting, too. His favorite part was of the painting is the eye and the dog. And let me just quickly show you that. Yeah, so it's probably a little small, uh, but here you can see it. And it's true. I mean, it gives the whole painting, like, the whole... Boston Dynamics dog personality, right? So anyways, just a really cool work and just so nice and painterly. And it's just so much better when you even know, like and he's got this beautiful brushwork here, guys. And now you see all the influences and he's been doing it for a while. Like this isn't someone who just got a nice brush set on Procreate, right? Because sometimes people can wonder about that sort of thing. This is like really, you know, 
rigorous painting, you know, a really competent painting. Continuing on, Gloomtube with a still life. So he came in the middle of the night, like a shadow in the night, and released this. So very interesting piece. And there's an interesting title, Crying in Wendy's Dining Room. So Wendy's, of course, is fast food if you do not live in North America. Uh, and so anyways, there's the bacon and crying. Maybe these are the tears here. And the mustard almost looks like a tear. Or the cheese. That's the cheese, the melted cheese. So anyways, just a cool work by Gloomtube. And we were talking about Gloomtube too yesterday, how that market is drying up pretty rapidly. Uh, so it just continues to be interesting out here. Dan Control, look at this, 35 Tezos. I guess this sold out, Rocking Horse. So continuing with the still life in, in a gradient style, kind of a new floor, new background kind of look. Pretty powerful, actually. And let's just see how quickly these things are going here. Uh, released at 6, 6, 18.06 Berlin time, so 6.06 .06 p.m., gone within 15 minutes. Okay, so on primary and sold on secondary for 11. Okay, these went originally for three. So, I mean, as I keep saying here, what bear market? Guys, like you look at Gloomtube, we didn't even look at that. That sold out in like two seconds, you know, like let's just quickly look, you know, like, I mean, you guys know this, but look, 339 and it was gone by 340, okay, on primary. Okay, so this is like, you know, I don't, if this isn't a hot market, I don't know what is, right? So don't worry about what people like. I don't think we need to soul search ourselves about what we're going to call NFTs so that the world likes us again. You know, uh, a lot of these art movements start with people hating you and that's OK. All right. You know, you have to have the courage of your convictions. Right. Uh, so anyways, continuing on. Another work by Dan Control, kind of in the same theme, right, with the toys. Uh, rocking horse, right? So kind of children's toys here. Little train. It's made of wood, but I'm sure you can travel in, travel in it anyway. I guess your imagination can travel in it. And so again, listed at two, gone by 214 and for two tezos. So pretty cool on secondary edition of 10 on secondary for 674. You also, you know, again, the empowering nature of being multi-chain you can, I, you know, you can release more work because if he had put all this out on object on the same day and he's releasing 10 works, maybe people, it doesn't give people time to be able to collect your work because they're out of money, right? Like people only have a certain amount of budget, but then you go over to Ethereum here on foundation and release cigarettes and put a 0 0.15 ETH reserve on it. And, you know, so again, I think being multi-chain is empowering to the artists now and the art itself is quite fascinating and you know what you know what i missed this looks like a vapo cigarette so again modern imagery because otherwise i was even going to say like this looks like it could be some pop work from the 60s but it's not because this is a vapo uh, cigarette so nice detail dan cigarettes and i like how he doesn't like overstate it in the title so Dan Control, some more still lives, just Treza Rodank's uh, block and sausage, playing with some surrealist juxtapositions and some just, you know, bright colors in the background. So a sausage and a, you know, would you call that a cinder block? So available on Tezos for three, edition of 10. And he put out another one, just kind of these mysterious still lives here, egg and shoe. Also edition of 10, available for three, on object so interesting work and diego Barro with this pen drawing so this is digital so and he has been a long time uh friend on well long time is i guess four or five months on twitter here uh on twitter with chatita so used making procreate on an ipad with a rollerball pen technique so a very nice uh digital work here of probably his dog. And I love how he puts the writing in the bottom there. Uh, and another illustrative work. Now, I don't know if this is digital or not, but it was kind of hard to place these 
works in this uh, in in our role here. But here's Jess Thuga, biophilic concept artist, multimedium. So I'm not sure if these beautiful works of frogs are illustration, digital, or both. It looks like digital coloring, right? So I assume it's digital, but hard to say. Beautiful work regardless. Uh, Dan W. Look at this, a one of one from Dan W. I didn't even see that. The Birth of Venus. And in his kind of traditional interpretation, she looks kind of mad about it. Uh, and anyways, a beautiful interpretation here. Let's just see what's going on. Let's see how far we are. Six hours to go. It's at 275 Tezos. Again, you know, artists aren't sitting on their work here. Uh, so continuing on, Antonio loves uh, Angels, Saints, Prophets, St. Christopher on Fire, edition of 7 by for 30. Let's just take a look here. So these were, yeah, they went on primary for 1770 and just taking offers maybe on the rest. Interesting work. You know, again, a newer artist that we've been looking at here with these sort of strange digital illustrations, you know, just kind of very, the three eyes, the religious imagery, the eye and the pendant here, the fire, St. Christopher. Maybe he was uh, burned at the stake or something. St. Christopher on fire. So anyways, it's interesting. I mean, you see it in Uxine's Friar at the start too, the religious imagery, how it's kind of being processed in our modern, you know, with our, in our modern, from our modern perspectives here. So that's interesting. A work in progress from Insul that I thought kind of went well with that last work and just, I thought it was looking pretty good. And again, we love the process shots here. Nice colors and everything from Insul. And Ellie Lowe with a new trash work. And let me just get this going. Pretty cool music. I mean, really taking trash, taking trash to the next level. Uh, let me stop this. Pretty cool. Uh, offers for five. Sold for three on primary. I mean, the, one of the great things about Ellie Lowe is how low he keeps the prices on primary because I think he could raise them. I'm sorry. Just going through my uh, like Pavlovian dog, I am you know answering my notifications here. A beautiful work by Sabato on Ethereum. And this is really interesting. He's using the Manifold Gallery contract. Trust the platform, yes, no. And this is made with what I call retro tools, vintage software also, created in Deluxe Paint 4 on an emulated Amiga A1200 computer. And this is gonna go for auction and it starts at 0 0.089. And I think he was saying that he only has one other work on ETH and it's only available for trade. So to get a Sabato on ETH, you can get it really for a song here. Like it'd probably cost, you know, ETH is at 1300 bucks about. So 0 0.8, maybe that's a hundred bucks to at least start the auction. So really nice. And I love the pattern in the background and the concept is fun too. And just a nice animation. So, you know, totally original, isn't it? Comrade Wallop Bureau of Redistribution. So, yeah, I guess uh, it has something to do with platforms, maybe royalties, and looks like kind of a Fidel Castro hat there. Not sure, but he is a comrade, so that is probably a good guess. Continuing on, Pixel World. This is on form function, and I I don't think we've seen this artist before. The Again, the depth of the scene and just a really interesting animation here. Ferdero Peza is the name of the artist. Pretty small file, 884 by 1080. Let's just expand it here. So just a pretty cool animation here. Pixelation, who doesn't love this kind of stuff? I never get tired of this kind of stuff. So anyways, just looks great. And a lot of, you know, just web colors, you might say. Interesting use of depth of field here for contrast, getting that fuzzy, blurry contrasting with this very strong high contrast or a, 
uh, very defined uh, pixels in the front. Interesting work. Uh, glitch, aesthetic of the pixels. Buy now for five Tezos, which isn't that much, and it's a one of one. So I think that's still available for you Solana collectors out here. Tom Bombadil, also out uh, yesterday, uh, UFO under repair, supervision from the Spectrum Collection. And this sold out also right away. Let's just take a quick look. Yeah, sold out, how fast? Uh, 1557, it was listed, and it was gone by 1559 on primary. So, like, things are hot, okay? Especially on Tezos. But I mean, you saw there was just a 10 ETH sale on super rare there for Uxine. Yeah, like the, the market seems to be doing well. Pretty cool concept too. I'm impressed at how uh, prolific Tom Bombadil is. He puts out a work or two, it seems, every day from what I can tell, uh, or at least every day or two. This work I absolutely love. Again, Mason the Third, as I tweeted out, simply Mason. Uh, his, again, I love the poetry of his work. And you say, oh, what's the big deal? Um, let me make this big and let me get, it's the music. And com combined with the glitch ROM, okay? It's nice distortion here. I thought to myself, you know, is this our human destiny wrapped up in one NFT? I mean, it's great music from my perspective out here. And I mean, just so poetic. I mean, I adore this work, a one of one. So it's hard for me to stop it. Really, when I saw that yesterday on uh, on Object, I, I, that song was in my head for the rest of the day. I watched that thing like four or five times, at least, at least. So a stunning, stunning, stunning work from Mason the Third. Cap'n, another guy whose market is pretty hot. So he put out Anamnesis. Do you all know what Anamnesis means? Uh, that is a very important uh, Greek philosophical word. It is comes out of Plato's uh, the doctrine of recollection. This theory that if the soul is immortal, that Plato had, uh, that if the soul is immortal, real knowledge is actually eternal. And so when you understand and come to new understandings, it's really you're just remembering what was already what you already knew before you were born. When all the circles of the soul get taken, you know, get screwed up, as they say in the Timaeus. So uh, anamnesis is a great, very important philosophical, Greek philosophical word. What one perceives as learning is the recovery of what one has forgotten. So a little Platonism here from Kappen with this very charming, poetic, beautiful work here. Okay. And so just a nice kind of, has a bit of an alien feel and an impressionistic feel, just all of it. And I love how he actually has a little bit of dynamism in here with the movement. Very, very nice work from Cap. And, and as I was saying, look at the market here, 55 on primary, sorry, on secondary, like you can't get much here. Is This is kind of like what we're talking about, what me and Joe Rogan's dad were talking about yesterday on the show. Uh, you see here, like it's kind of like picked through. It's like, okay, there's one work you can get for 10 Tezos here. That's, you know, but there's not too much. And, you know, this one, okay, well, these ones aren't moving. If you want a moving one, uh, yeah, like there's, you see how it's starting to dry up here? Kappen's another one of these guys. Popple is another one. I mean, again, uh, like, did we look at the sale? Actually, how fast Kappen? Let's just look. Because, you know, to this thesis of how hot this market is, because if this isn't a hot market, I guess the only way it could be hotter is if things were going at a zero, right? Which 
I think is actually possible, but I have been guilty of being over bullish many times in my life. Uh, so let's just see how quickly. So this took a day, okay? This took 21 hours to sell out, interestingly. So, okay. So, you know, but I'm surprised. I, I think if this went out on Twitter, I think, that, yeah. So anyways, not bad anyways. He still sold how many editions? Very quickly, 20 in 21 hours, not bad. I mean, especially a lot of these guys are just artists like you or me working at home and uh, there you're selling out in a day, in less than a day. And many people like Popple here, look at this. I brought up his uh, mints, puts it on sale, listed at 2131, so 931 Berlin time, sold out 10 minutes later at nine Tezos and edition of 25. Okay, so brings in 250 Tezos, which is maybe 200 bucks, a little more, uh, with this really cool work here. Fountain of Lunacy, part of the Sanitarium series, this kind of alienish monster pixel art series. Very cool. He said he was working on uh, over Christmas on a kind of an overheating laptop. Pretty impressive. Uh, with, uh, you know, just his imagination too. I mean, first of all, technically, it's pretty interesting, everything that's going on here. And uh, what a strange work, right? I mean, it really fits into his whole kind of uh, themes of kind of sci-fi and, you know, all that stuff. The sound of the water echoes through the hall, a reminder of the tortured souls that fell to the grip of madness trapped in this place. Their spirits still linger with one escape. I think is what he means with on escape with one escape probably fountain of lunacy part of sanitarium series the red skeleton nice contrast stalomir this kind of strange interesting pixel artist very you might remember the colors remember the person that did this wild work here again 5250 now you can't get these works you know without putting in an offer unless you want to pay up uh, home world here we looked at we looked at all three of these so there's a new one available for only three on the primary i think it's still available uh editions of 33 i assume it's going pretty quickly here anyways it looks like work vehicle so it looks like kind of like the inside of a work vehicle so an, again like kind of like some space sci-fi thing so just a very unusual series here. Homeworld Memories, you know, very cool series. Uh, Ed Marola, the great pixel artist here, experimental pixel artist uh, with a new work in his traditional colors here. Let's take a closer look, bird number 11. So interesting, almost looks like it's using a sample brush of sorts here as it looks like brushworks, brushes are being dragged. There seems to be a bit of fuzziness, which is another kind of uh, thing he, technique he likes to use. And again, more of this, you know, it looks like uh, the brushwork is being kind of rasterized or something, bitmapped. Um, and then again, so just these wild works. I mean, what is going on here, right? Uh, so bird. You know, just wild, wild works. I mean, you see these people sitting here, see this guy at the controls. I mean, and then this kind of almost medieval perspective, the weird colors, just very, very interesting. Bird number 11, buy for 13. And like, I think Ed's also another artist that's selling out really quickly here. Like, let's just look. Again, editions of 33, for four Tezos each, lists at 121 and sold out by 128. Is that correct? Yeah. So he sells out in seven minutes. So Ed Marola, Ed Marola doing well. Edition of 33, I think this is still available on primary. There's four left here. So again, very experimental stuff here. Uh, he got one of his vases that he likes to use. Uh, Slady Dream. So another very interesting work here. Uh, yeah, just you make of it what you, you can, but I mean, it's just always interesting and the experimentation and everything, you know, you look at over here, like in the background, 
So you got to love it. I mean, again, I'm kind of back to this idea of the rigorousness, the intellectual rigor uh, of what's going on here. Uh, we see this other one that he released, Pirate Approaching Shore. And it's interesting in this one. And yeah, so object, unfortunately, the images are not centered here. So they get glued to the top here. Um, so very cool. So a pirate ship here. You got to love the pirate ships. Uh, and approaching a town, right? And so you see, and then again, this kind of glitched out fuzzy pixels over here. It looks like brushes that's been kind of turned into, uh, let's see if we can even zoom in a little more here. It's always tricky here. Let me just try. Yeah, here we go. Like it kind of is worthwhile. Like look at the sea is quite effective, isn't it? Right? Like these waves on the sea. Very, very, very interesting experimentation here. And these pretty little ships, one with a little skull and crossbones on it. So there we go. Right? Approaching a citadel, you know, or a town or something. Uh, crazy abstraction. Anyways, very interesting. Continuing on, P1 with a new work. And we saw P1 who released some work with music. Now just a straight up pixel work. Interesting and unusual work here. Rabbit hole. It's colorful, comfy, and fluffy. So again, like, uh, I just think this is incredibly original pixel artwork that we're seeing here, uh, you know, on the blockchain here on Tezos. <laughs> Speaking of unusual and interesting, uh, Hasdrubal Waffle, look at this, uh, I guess you'd call it a PFP, this portrait. Like, look at everything that's going on. Let me bring it up in a new window here. Hopefully this is, yeah, so we can really, like, you see the fuzziness. You know, it's almost like a fuzzy outline here with this, frankly, beautiful work. This beautiful profile picture. I mean, at first I would have thought, oh, you know, like what many people might think at the start, like, oh, like, what's this? This is like a kid's drawing, but this is not a kid's drawing. And it almost looks like video in the background. You know, there's so much experimentation, which again, the word that I think of when I see has dribble waffles work is rich. And I think it speaks to this whole kind of, again, I keep coming back to this rigor that's in the work. And that's actually what Santiago was saying on yesterday's Twitter spaces, was he was getting very bullish on the space, seeing artists like Hasdrubal Waffle starting to sell a lot of work. Because I think if I understand Santiago right, he sees it as fairly sophisticated work, as do I, right? Uh, so, and it's, it's not easy. In a sense, ironically, it looks like a kid's drawing, but this isn't easy. But once you start to appreciate this sort of stuff, uh, it gets really interesting and exciting, you know. Uh, another has Drupal Waffle work. This looks like it was made with Mario Paint, but I don't know that. Uh, deconstructing Koikon. Uh, Jacques Derrida and Skynet give up on their attempt to deconstruct Koikon down to its essence. So. I guess this is Jacques Derrida on his computer with his pipe. And there is the Terminator. T I guess that's the T, is that the T-800? I'm not sure. And some sausages and a keyboard. And again, you just see the richness here. And it's kind of back to this intellectual rigor. Like, look at the theme. And what is he doing? He's combining Jacques Derrida and the Terminator? Like, I don't know what you're seeing in the contemporary art galleries that is, you know, like... I'm not saying it, anything like that it's worse. I'm just saying this is just as interesting is my point here. Like we're just as interesting over here. Uh, like if I go to a contemporary art gallery down the street and I see this, I go, that's a pretty cool gallery. They're on it, right? Uh, so as Drupal Waffle, let's just see. I mean, you can't even get this if you want to. Uh, offers for five. I mean, how do you even get this? Auction bid. Well, sale for 22 to Ailey, who frankly, go follow Ailey on Twitter, uh, who helps do the comments on this show, the summaries. She's been on fire and we're going to see a few more works. Uh, so Ailey picked this up for 22 and who actually owns this? Yeah, so Santiago, Fanger's like, 
These are not going to be easy to get, low editions, and again, you can put this up in any contemporary art gallery or in, in a contemporary art gallery, let's put it that way, and be very pleased with your, your gallery, okay? So I say, again, I'm just sharing my opinion here, of course, uh, Human Colonel, who I think, is, I'm not sure his friends or seems to be in that kind of same scene here. Uh, with his, remember the anti-profile picture project, the anti-PFP series? Well, has a beautiful one uh, that came out here. And again, like, you know, we're talking about new countries, undiscovered countries on Tezos. And again, you just see this contrast of some basically almost looks like San Diego glitchy recycling type stuff in the background. And then this painterly uh, head, which is you know, blurred out on the outside, this beautiful kind of work on the inside, and then outrageously, look at this suit, you know, which is done just with basically a one pixel pen, basically, or pencil, you know, and then a flat brown. Again, this is sophisticated work, okay? It's, it's you know, it's easy to gloss over. This is a nice one of one, and, you know, disappears after six minutes for 22 to Gatto Moto. And we have a few more here. Again, uh, I will see the sky matching this energy. And let me just see. This went for 22, five minutes later. So Human Kernel, again, part of the anti-PFP work. And you see just similar ideas where it's just like experimentation in the back. Uh, and then contrasting this kind of blurred out painting with this super sharp you know, what looks like kind of what the Edmarola brush was doing in that other work. You know, these kind of sampled pixel brushes, right? And then mustache and just an interesting color. Like so many interesting decisions here. So again, that word rich uh, just crosses my mind so often when I'm looking at these artists' work. Solid passive time, also a anti-PFP by Human Kernel. And again, plain Playing with our sense of, you know, we saw this in Haiti Rocket too, with the sense of what is acceptable in the sense of what can we call art? You know, sometimes Haiti would take a Nintendo glitch ROM, I'm thinking the one with the planes, and just make it flash a little bit. And I still loved it. And I get the same kind of sense here. It's playing with this idea of what can we call a great work of art, right? Or a good work of art or a piece of art, right? And, you know, so there's some serious experimentation here and it's incredibly interesting here is another one i managed to pick this up i mean you got to be extremely fast with human kernel eyes of a secret spirit doors that lead each time to a different site so again you see this experimentation here maybe playing with like a finger you know brush in the background with these kind of sunset colors and then this alien this kind of fuzzed out alien you know so again like, it's easy to look at this and go, oh, you know, no big deal. And look at even just like the drop shadow around. This is pretty sophisticated stuff, okay? Another one, a uh, human kernel concentrating in a layer out of space and time and see just, again, experimentation in the shirt here. And one of the things that you can appreciate in this anti-PFP project is the uh, variety of experimentation that's going on here. Right? Like, I mean, it's not easy to actually do stuff like this. It might seem easy, but it's actually quite difficult to do work that feels irrational, you know, as I always say. So look at the eyes, you know, because you always want to correct these things, right? So bold. It's very bold. So very cool work from Human Kernel. Now, another PFP, kind of pixelated PFP project from Board Me Social Club. And I thought we could just take a broad view here uh, in the in the interest of time here. Uh, but anyway, it's just very interesting. All sold out right away. Some were sent to, I think this was sent to NSF World. This one sold for eight Tezos. So just a cool, again, playing with the PFP theme. So I thought I'd show this with the other PFPs. Uh, now this is another, this is an eyelid discovery, at least for me. And... I, again, it kind of plays to this whole Hestrubal waffle and all this experimentation, human kernel. Uh, you know, again, this looks like a kid's drawing, but when you actually look at what's going on, it's actually like, oh, this is actually pretty interesting. Future Legend series. 
Just in case you don't know who it is, here's a clue. And I'll show you, this is another work. This is a one of one. I picked this up for like 18 Tezos, you know, 15 bucks. And as I get deeper into this experimental work that these guys are doing, it's the same artist. Kind of a, I think this is kind of like an outdoor, sorry, I think this, yeah, I could print it. Uh, where I grew up, it's kind of like a home, it looks like, right? So multi multiple processes utilizing sketchbook, MAL, and Affinity. I don't even know what half those things are, but all I know is there's some very, very interesting experimentation here that you can get on the cheap. So very cool. Speaking of experimentation, Detura, Mirage number 6233. Another kind of just edgy experimental pixel artist here. Again, it looks like gallery work in my universe. It's like, oh yeah, this is the kind of thing I would see at a contemporary art gallery in Berlin. Uh, so slightly out of order here. So back to Louis. Um, so yeah, so here's just kind of a broad look. And what you see is a lot of variety actually. A lot of experimentation, kind of has a bit of a Santiago feel on these two, especially this one. So anyways, Louis, painter, animator, comic artist, and sad girl who does kind of glitched out anime. And again, just more experimentation, you know, so uh, basically it looks like they take scenes and kind of, you know, uh, rasterize or bitmap them. Uh, into a couple of colors here and don't even worry about you know being able to tell what this is or anything so just kind of a digital impressionism of sorts uh, BSOD the lows don't feel the same as the ups so kind of a blue work uh, depressing work uh, Bliss Sophie Algura so let me just bring this up so again more experimentation here again this is the last two days my friends. This is the last two days. Uh, so here, interesting work, right? And then puts out a variation. I think everybody who bought the first one uh, got the second, okay? So just wild experimentation here on the blockchain. Alt Bliss, airdrop to collectors of the original. Sophie Ogura, edition of eight. And here's some of Sophie's work. So we saw this work here too. So kind of experimental pixel art glitch with uh, anime flavor, right? And just kind of edgy, very edgy. Continuing on, uh, LB, and we are making our way to the end here. LB, the video artist with a new work, so an abstract work. And what is the title here? One in the same. And again, using Panasonic and Ederol, rescanned from CRT monitor, buy for five, edition of 10. And I thought this still was beautiful. It's an edition of one available for 44 from LB here. So a very nice still, I thought. And kind of a glitched out, it looks like uh, old VCR glitch or something. So anyways, very nice work. Music. So House of the Model uh, is, you know, you might know on Tezos and put, puts out this great track. Just on the 12 inch single, you know, tip or the rebirth of the single. Just a cool house track. I mean, this is kind of like the soundtrack to what's going on here. It's just a good old fashioned party that's going on here. I mean, it's a good track. Two Tezos. Like. With all the all the tunes, with all the tunes that are appearing on Tezos, like again, you could have music that's DJed from the blockchain and still be good at a party that's showing all this uh, art, you know, a testament to the culture. So before I get too inspired, we will move on. House of the Model. This was interesting as well. More experimentation. So this is Haley X. And this is AI art, but what I really liked about this was how it was kind of like an untraditional use of AI. This isn't our kind of classical, you know, we'll make a photorealistic person or like an 18th century painting, some of the tropes we often see and love, by the way. Uh, but here's just like a bit more of an edgy abstraction using AI. 
And we've seen some abstraction with AI. We talked a little bit about that yesterday and how some people were very excited about that and as am I. So just an interesting uh, AI work. This is using AI, what is it? Artificially illustrated glitch Western primer for machine learners. So I assume that means, yeah, an AI here. This is by John Cates, uh, whose name I've seen quite a bit on Twitter and the blockchain. So here's some of his art. I think we've shown a couple of works in the past. So kind of a Western kind of glitched out cowboy. And there's another one, which kind of goes really well with it. Uh, you can almost imagine the cowboy going through the plains here and then coming across the mountains. So anyways, some interesting glitch. Editions of five. I think these are all sold out. Yes, sold out in a few hours, three hours here. And continuing on, Sky Goodman. Shout out to Sky Goodman. Thanks for appearing on the program, who has a ton going on. Uh, listen to the show if you want to hear everything Sky Goodman's up to and his process. You know, Runetune was mentioning maybe we should have kind of like a weekly guest. And I think uh, it's a great idea uh, just to go more in depth with, say, one person each week at the Twitter spaces. So we're floating that idea around and seeing what we can come up with. Uh, so anyways, I've had artists reach out and say, hey, do you do interviews? And I don't. But maybe just maybe the Twitter spaces is basically a similar idea. So anyways, from the Lost Sneaker series, I believe where Sky Goodman incorporates IA, uh, artificial intelligence, into his sneaker series. And really interesting here, uh, here you get a lot of three-dimensionality, and here it's almost pretty flat. So interesting work going on. And again, it looks like a Sky Goodman piece. Uh, Ile. Ile discovered this very interesting AI artwork. So another artist. I mean, Ile, again, if you want to find some very interesting art, Ile is a great curator from my perspective. Uh, so anyways, uh, just another interesting AI artist. This time it is Oblique Oblivion, digital and AI, according to Ile. Really beautiful, totally. Look at this. I can't remember where I found this. It was on Twitter, though. And what I found so interesting about this, and I'm pretty sure it's an AI artwork. It is an AI artwork. Uh, I'm like, it doesn't say, but like, it, it sure seems that way. Look at the hand and everything. Is This is a really different take on AI from a subject matter point of view, from a content point of view. Like it's kind of plain, you know, it's called separation, I think. And it's like a couple. There are some people who can stay in your heart, but not in your life. So this is really interesting, right? This is someone doing kind of like a poetic work about separation but using AI, right? And so it's got a bit of a different feel to it and the wall and everything. So pretty interesting. Buy for four, edition of a thousand. Wow. And did it even, it might've even all sold out for all we know. Loading up this history may crash my computer here. Um, but anyways, selling, accepting offers and transferred to a bunch of people. Okay. So anyways, really, really nice work here. Uh, Clown Vamp, as we wrap up here with another interesting work, kind of a surrealist work, interesting light. It's called Screen Time, a piece about moral panic and my ETH Genesis. So he is on Manifold XYZ. Shall we take a very quick look at his manifold and see what's going on here? 907 minted at 0 0.03. So that is, how much is that? I'll very quickly do the math here and answer phone calls after. Let's just quickly go 907 times 0 0.03, 27, wow, 27 ETH, is that correct? 907 times 0 0.033. That says 29.9 ETH. <laughs> my oh my, my oh my. So that is impressive. Yeah, so anyways, Clown Vamp with a huge sale. Uh, this is another interesting kind of AI work. Din Burns, GM Fam, something is coming. So again, kind of just playing around some interesting experimentation here. Uh, Zoom with some, continues with these much richer textures. Like the other textures were rich, but these seem a little richer in the last couple of days, in the last few couple of releases here 
in her AI work. And they're nice slow additions here. So it continues to be very interesting, very attractive prices. Uh, it just continues to be a really attractive AI series and different. She really does her own thing. Uh, totally recognizable as hers. My mom likes to say, you know, it's great that your work is recognizable as yours. And it's true. That is a nice thing uh, to have. This was another interesting experimentation. Big Bad Rex AI art here. So kind of a, you know, half drawing looking uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. And finally, as we wrap up here, Marina, again, this is the last 48 hours. I'm running through these. So these works were released and they were quite beautiful here by Marina Amadova. And that was co-created with Igor Tsaruk. So a really nice uh, collaboration here with AI. I think the colors, like it was a really fascinating collaboration in the sense that I think the colors changed a little bit and uh, it really just gave a, a a new take on her work again here looking really nice here and here is Igor Tsaruk so I guess these are the ones maybe that he finished and those are the ones that she finished I'm guessing and I brought up a couple of those he's got this super high resolution style and you see some of the spheres and kind of like the twin type element that are in her works interesting bottom here I guess that's a table interesting compositionally at the bottom here uh, Igor Tsaruk, edition of two, and Chicken Pox, again, part of the collaboration, and again, very high resolution looking work here. And finally, we have Edge Q with a, kind of a 18th century Moog here, Organo Electronico by Lorenzo Musante, edition of five available for four, interestingly in a field, so again, continues the AI, and a take on Flavor Flav with that huge clock that he was known for from Public Enemy, Lord Flavius Flava Flav. Good title from Edge Q, Buy for 25, edition of five. So I am really enjoying that series there. And Ilya Shipkin, Shkipin with his uh, AI sculpture, you know, so again, keep your eyes open for that. Uh, looks like the real, looks like a photo of a real sculpture here. So Again, super interesting, but only rendered as a two-dimensional image. So it's AI sculpture as a two-dimensional image. And finally, Mr. Shapeless with some nice pieces uh, to close us out here. Uh, Prague, where I visited, I highly recommend Prague. At Halloween, it was great. Uh, look at these great clouds here too. New World GM. So Mr. Shapeless seems to be just effortlessly putting out beautiful works here. Not sure if we looked at this one. If we did, it's worth looking at again. I mean, you gotta love too how the sunset is showing up the reflection on these mountains here and almost our figures here with the long kind of Salvador Dali-like shadows. Beautiful work, beautiful color, beautiful contrast between the blue and the orange. And walk with a beautiful uh, physical work here. Look at how good he is with the spray can getting these beautiful drips and even just the originality of the yellow and the blue and the red dots at auction for a hundred spray on paper and the JPEG is available for a hundred edition of one Pimpa. Very nice, simple work. The drips are beautiful, aren't they? The whole thing, I mean, really turned uh, the spray paint and spray can into a real art form. Not that it wasn't before, uh, but really making it his own. Anyway, that is your show, everyone. Thanks as always. You guys are the best. Until next time, take care.